I just deployed a full stack app to AWS without touching the AWS console, without writing a script, without even opening a browser. And somehow my app was live. Tools like this don't come around often and rarely do I say this, but this tool, this one's changing the game. It's called Amazon Q Developer CLI, and it literally deployed my entire full stack app with only one natural language command. Deploy this app to Amazon EC2. No joke, it provisioned the resources, it set up the environment and handled the entire deployment, literally all of it. And that's not all it can do. So in this video, we're gonna break it down into three parts. One, we're gonna go through a walkthrough of Q Developer CLI, changing some code and then deploying the full stack app with zero manual steps on Amazon EC2. Then second, we're gonna jump into how we can install Q Developer CLI on your personal machine. And then lastly, we'll cover what you need to set up everything, including any type of gotchas. So everything connects and works properly on your machine before the video is over. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Groby, a software engineer with over 10 years of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. And just before we dive in, a quick heads up. This video is sponsored by AWS. They reached out to showcase the Q Developer CLI, and after testing it myself, I knew it was worth showing you. Everything you're about to see is kind of mind-blowing. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. So what I'm gonna show you right now is the autocomplete bash commands. It's a really cool feature, and this is before we can even start talking to Q and it's gonna deploy everything for us. But what we can do is if we need to CD into the project, right? And I say CD, it's gonna open up this auto complete. We know we're gonna get into the desktop. And then I can just say, hey, I wanna get into the QCLI YouTube video. And right here's my project. So I'm just gonna press enter. And just like that, the autocomplete got us in there. And it doesn't just do that. If we typed in like Docker, let's say we were doing a Docker project, it's gonna give us examples on how we can use Docker. If we wanna come back and we wanted to say Git, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna talk about Git add, apply, archive, and you can kind of go through all these where you can see the most popular Git, like checkout, pool, push, everything that you would need to do. But what's really awesome about QCLI is the chat feature. And all you have to do is press Q and it's gonna open up this chat feature. Now, one thing I wanna show when talking with this chat bot is we can paste like what separates you from other AI products. And it's gonna be thinking before it responds, just like everything else. It says, as Amazon Q, I have several key differences from other AI products. One, I am AWS native integration. This one's big and we're gonna go through that in a little bit when we start deploying. It says, I'm built specifically to work with AWS services, infrastructure with deep knowledge of AWS best practices. I have system context awareness. I can understand your operating system, current directory and other systems. We're gonna do number two also quite a bit here in a little bit because we are gonna make this do some code changes for us in a, just a couple seconds. We have direct system integration. I can execute bash commands, read and write files, and make AWS CLI calls directly on your environment. Again, this is exactly what we're going to be doing here when we deploy. And this says I'm an infrastructure expert, security focus, and it can do a bunch of other things. I mean, this thing is super powerful. Not to mention it has access to the AI large language model cloud, which is completely free with an AWS builder ID. And two other things that are huge, Q has MCP support and has a 200K context window, which is a ton. But we'll get back into that in a second. We can access the Q chat by saying slash quit. And then I just want to clear to get back to a starting point. I'm going to first start up our application just to kind of show what we're going to be working with here. But I need to start up our virtual environment. So I can say source. And then right here, it's going to give us exactly what we need based on the autocomplete. And that can say enter. We're in our virtual environment. And now I can go ahead and say uvacorn main colon app dash dash reload. So we can see what the project is. I'm going to open up our browser, refresh. And right here, we can see that we have a budgeting app following the 50, 30, 20 rule, which is 50% needs, 30% wants, 20% savings. And right here, I have a couple items in here and it's gonna kind of tell us our overall budgeting. But one thing it doesn't show us as of right now is that our wants is over our 30% limit. It's not giving us any errors or throwing out any issues with our application. We probably want the app to only allow savings to go over 20%. We probably want needs and we probably want either at that limit or under, right? Because with budgeting, the more you save, the better everything is. With needs and wants, you probably want that at the cap or lower. So let's go ahead and tell QCLI to make these changes for us. So I'm gonna stop our application. I'm gonna jump into our QCLI and I'm gonna type in Q for it to come up with this chat bot that we can ask it questions to. 
So I'm going to say in my app, QCLI YouTube app, add a way that makes the user know if they step outside the 50, 30, 20 plan, maybe turn something red, make it so savings is the only thing that can be over the 20 rule. Then when we press enter, it's going to start thinking and it's going to tell us, yeah, we'll implement a new feature to notify this and it's going to tell us what it can run. I'm going to say yes. You can say yes, no, or trust, which means trust is going to allow you to trust it forever. So it's going to look at the application a little bit more, and it's going to make the adjustments needed for us to be able to implement the command that we just said. But that's not everything we're going to do. We're then going to have QCLI take it to the next step and deploy the entire application for us. All right, so let's see what it did. It says it implemented the 5030 budget rule notification feature in our budget app. It made a backend change right here where it created flags for needs exceeded and once exceeded based on the 50% and the 30% rule and intentionally did not create a flag for savings exceeding 20% because we wanted saving, you know, saving was a good thing. So we were okay with that. We then had the CSS changes. So it added an extended CSS class, which is cool. Um, specific classes for their budget, added styles and a red background color. Perfect. We mentioned red. Remember we mentioned red and said maybe something red that will help the user know. And then it made the appropriate front end index changes. So I'm excited to see what this app does. To exit out of queue, you need to say slash quit. And now let's go ahead and run our application again and see what was changed. And boom, we can see your budget is not following the 50, 30, 20 rule. Once should not be more than 30%. Look at that. It's saying savings is under 20%. Once is not yet there. So let's go ahead and add some savings just to make sure everything worked well. If I wanted to say like 401 KB, I don't know, just something, a <laughs> new savings thing. And we said add, we can see that the savings went over. Our once is not quite there. So if we wanted to go into our needs, let's just say internet and let's make it super expensive just so we can hit that number. Let's do food at 1500. We're getting closer. Now let's just delete a want. Let's delete this laptop want. Oh no, now our needs are too high, but we can see how it works, right? It's trying to always make sure that our limit for our needs and our wants are at that 50, 30, or lower mark, which is great. And that was handled all automatically by QCLI without us having to do literally anything. But now let's go ahead and deploy this full stack application with these new code changes onto an EC2 instance. So if we come back into here, I'm gonna stop our application. I'm gonna go back into Q by pressing Q. Now let's go ahead and say, I want you to go into my QCLI YouTube directory where a full stack fast API is. I then want you to completely deploy this entire app to an EC2 and then give me the link. I don't want to be involved in the process at all. Press enter. And now it's going to go ahead and do everything for us. It says, I'll help you deploy your fast API budget app into an EC2 instance. Let's break down the steps. So it's going to create all the scripts that we need. Then it's going to automatically run the scripts that we need and deploy everything for us without us having to touch anything. And it's going to go through every single step, read everything and handle it for us. It's really, really awesome. So now we can say trust or yes. I'm just going to say trust for everything just to let it go and do its thing. It's checking our access key and our secret key so it can create everything that we need to deploy the EC2 instance for us. So I'm just going to keep pressing trust as it goes ahead and dives into the AWS CLI and creates all the scripts for us. And boom, there it says the budget app is deployed. And we'll see how this looks here in a second. Need to do the last couple steps. It's going to come back to us and it's going to give us the link. All right. So it says, great. I've successfully deployed your fast API budget app on an EC2 instance. Here's what I did. Create a security group allowing HTTP and SSH. Generated an SSH key for secure access. Launch an EC2 instance on the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Created and set up a script that does all of this configuration. And then it says our application's live. So let's go ahead and grab this and see it live. And here it is, guys. Here it is. It's on this URL on the Amazon AWS. It's on our EC2. And here's our budgeting app. I can say 401k where we have, you know, $3,000 in our savings. Boom. It adds it right here. We can say our mortgage is going to be 6,500, which seems pretty high, but we'll add it in here anyway, just to kind of show us that our application is working as needed. It's going to our wants. We want to go on a huge vacation, which is going to cost $10,000. And just going to give us, you know, errors all over that actually fixed our needs because our wants are so high, but our application is live. Our application is live on EC2 and Amazon QCLI handled all the scripts 
to deploy everything for us. This is mind blowing to show you where the future of technology is going. But now I'm sure you want this on your machine and it's completely free, so I don't blame you. What you need to do is we need to first go ahead and install this. Now to install it is pretty straightforward. If you're on a Mac, I definitely recommend using Homebrew. You can just do brew install Amazon Q, and then there's a couple different ways on how you can get it on Windows and Linux. But to kind of walk through how to do this, and I'm gonna open up a new terminal. From here, we can just do brew install Amazon Q. If you have Homebrew, it's going to download everything that we need. Now I already have it installed on my machine, so I don't have to worry about an extra download or it taking a while, but it might take just a little bit longer on your machine. After you get it installed, you're gonna get a new app which is called Amazon Q installed on your machine. It's not quite the CLI yet, it's this app. Now from here, we can go over and install the CLI by coming over into CLI completions and then saying, yes, I want to enable these features to integrate the CLI into our application. Now, the very first thing you're gonna need to do is set up an AWS Builder ID. An AWS Builder ID represents you as an individual and is independent from any credentials and data you may already have existing in your AWS accounts. Like other personal profiles, AWS Builder ID remains with you as you progress through your personal, educational, and career goals. So it just represents you as a unique individual and it's completely free, no credit card, you're good to go with that. So just go ahead and make a new account. It's probably gonna tell you to do it right through here. And that's all you need to get started with Amazon QC. CLI. Now, if you want to be able to deploy on AWS and do the AWS magic I just did, you need to install another thing called AWS CLI. I'll leave all the links in the description below. But after that, you are completely ready to use Amazon Q. And it's such a powerful tool. I'm looking forward to seeing how you use it, how exciting it is, and what you're using it for in the comments. So I'll see you in the next video.